the law of detachment. So what's the law of detachment? So if we use a truth table, that will help us understand the law of detachment a little bit better. So if you recall, when we fill out a truth table, we just look at all the different cases for P and Q. So if the hypothesis is true, if the conclusion is true, I can have a true hypothesis and a false conclusion. I can have a false hypothesis and a false conclusion. And then I can have a false hypothesis and a true conclusion. So if I were to create a conditional out of these two, where it's a true hypothesis and, it, and it's a true conclusion, then my truth value would be true. In this case here, true implies false. That would be false. False implies false would be true. And false implies true would also be true. So there's only one case such that you get a contradiction, and that's when you have a true hypothesis and a false conclusion. So that's the only time that you have a false conditional. And the law of detachment says this. Let's say I were to tell you that I'm thinking of a conditional, and it has a truth value. So I'm thinking of a conditional such that the truth value is true. So some 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 conditional that I'm thinking of has a truth value of is true. So if I look at my truth table, there's three cases where your conditional can be true. So it can be true in this case here, it can be true in this case here, or it could be true in this case here. So there are three different cases when your conditional can be true. Now, if we were to think in terms of like investigations, like think like in a, a de thinking like a detective. Now, if I also told you that, let's say the hypothesis was true, so the hypothesis is true. All right, thinking like a detective. If I look at my truth table, right, we only have four different possibilities for a conditional. Right, if in these these types of combinations, if I tell you that the conditional has the true value of true, we know there's only three cases. But then I, if I also tell you that we know the hypothesis is true, well, if you look at these three cases, which case has it such that the hypothesis is true? Well, the hypothesis is represented by P, and I can see here in my table that there's only one case where the conditional is true and the hypothesis is true, and that's in this case here. So I know in these cases it's not true. And how does the law of detachment help me? Well, if I tell you these two instances are true, right, then we can conclude that Q has to be true. So Q must be true. So that's how we use the law of detachment. So again, it's kind of like you're doing a little investigation where if I give you these conditions, right? Because these are again, these are all the possible ways you can have conditional statements arranged. And if I tell you that the conditional statement has a truth value with true, right? There's only three out of four ways that can happen. And if I also tell you that the hypothesis is true, right? So that's what they mean when when you see just the the p by itself. Then we know that there's only one case where the conditional statement is true, and a hypothesis is true, and then that's when q is true. So that's why we're able to make this conclusion that the fact that Q has to be true because these two instances occur and there's only one way where that happens and that's right here. So that would be the law of detachment.